Hello everyone, this is Miguel Greenberg once again and this is part 4 of my quick react tutorial. Uh, in this part we are going to talk about another super important concept, the, uh, the effect hook. Uh, so uh, more than likely when you write your application uh, you are going to need to load data that comes from uh, from some API which could be your your own API your your, your back end or it could be some some other API it doesn't really matter um, the, the the fact is you will need to send a request and and then wait until the response to that request arrives and then only then you will be able to to show that information uh, and uh, the, the problem with uh, with this is that if, if you issue a request, in your React function, then uh, rendering will be sort of blocked, uh, and and we we don't really want that. Uh, the way you you want to do this is to to render the page without that information, may, maybe uh, showing a placeholder or or just just an empty space where that information that you're waiting on should go, and then uh, in the background send a request, and when the response arrives update the page to, to show the information. Uh, so this is what we uh, what we are going to talk about in this video. And uh, as an example, uh, I, I decided to use this, uh, th th there's a very simple API that provides exchange rates uh, given a, uh, a base currency. So uh, we are going to start uh, by showing the, uh, the US dollar exchange rates as of today and, and we are going to use this API uh, to do it and uh, we, uh, we we will basically send a request using the the effect hook which is what we are going to discuss uh, so uh, let's start let's add a, a, a little subtitle here and uh, and then here we uh, we are going to have to render a, a a list of exchange rates. We're going to show a, a number of currencies and under uh, the exchange rate uh, against the uh, the USD, the dollar. Um, so, uh, because we we don't have the information yet, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a mock version of that data, and uh, this is something that I I always like. Uh, so that I don't have to worry about the request initially, I uh, I will create a, a, a fake version of that data, and that will allow me to uh, to figure out the uh, the rendering first, which is easier. So let's create a rates uh, object, and th this API that I'm going to use, uh, and actually I can show you that. Let's open a new page here. So the API is actually very simple. You send a request to uh, API uh, rates API dot IO slash API slash latest and then provide a base currency like that and then and then you get back a bunch of currencies in a uh, in an object I mean in Python it will be a dictionary we, we call them objects in uh, in JavaScript so, so let's write one like that. So let's do let's do a couple. So something like that. So so now we want to render them. Uh, so so back in part one, I showed you how to render a list. Uh, this isn't a list. This is an object. So um, when you have an object and you you want to render the contents of the object, uh, what you usually do is you uh, you get the keys of the object, and, and that is a list, and and then you can iterate over the list uh, to to render the uh, the values of that uh, object, uh, however you want. So uh, to get the keys, you use object dot keys uh, in that way, and there there you have the uh, the plain rendering of that list. So then we can say map 
and here uh, for a given currency we can render uh, let's say the currency colon and then we want the the value for that currency uh, what am I missing closing of the list there we go uh, okay so, so so this is this is what we are going to do uh, so here we have the uh, the uh, the object and uh, it's nicely rendered as a list so so now we we need to send that request to to the exchange rates API um, so let's copy this URL so I cannot, as I said, do it here in the render function uh, uh, or the component function uh, because I don't really want to block. So what we are going to do is we are going to create uh, what in React is called an effect function. So react dot effect, uh, sorry, use effect, and here we pass a function. Uh, that we uh, that we are going to uh, use to implement this request. So so when you define an effect function, uh, React is going to call it after it renders the component. So so it, it'll render the component. Uh, rates is going to be instead of being a uh, hard coded uh, object, you're going to uh, we're going to make it into a state variable. So React use state, and this is going to be an empty, an empty object initially. And here we need rates and set rates, as we as we've seen uh, before. So so now this is this is an empty object, and this is rendering the empty object. So so this is all working good. So this function that's uh, that's given as an argument to use effect. It's going to run after the page renders. So it's going to render with an empty list, with nothing, and then uh, React will run this function. So, uh, oh, actually, I forgot something important. Uh, whenever you write a an effect function, uh, the use effect uh, function takes a second argument that normally you will start uh, you, you will set it as an empty list and this is uh, not something that I, I'm going to discuss a lot in this video but uh, this this is the list of things that will trigger this effect function to run so, so at this point we're not going to worry about that and we, we just want the function to run once when the component renders and we will get our list of exchange rates and that's it so, so we set this as an empty list. Uh, so let's use fetch to send a request to this API. Uh, so fetch uses the, uh, the promise syntax. So uh, when we get a response, we, uh, we want the response converted to JSON which is another promise-based thing. And then finally, we get the data. And so, so here, let's, let's move this a little bit. So here, uh, at the end of this promise chain, we have the data. So let's start by logging that data and see, see how it looks. Uh, so it's down here. You can see that it, it comes with uh, base. And then there's a, a a key called rates, which has all those things that we want to show. So so basically, it's data dot rates that we want. So can you guess how we do this? We we have the rates in a state, and we have a state setter. So all we need to do is set rates and pass 
the object with the rates. And that's it. And now here we have all our rates. So uh, because of this empty array, this is going to run once and, and that's it. And uh, now we're done. Uh, so let's keep going a little bit. Let's say that uh, since I, I, I showed you this, I'm, I'm thinking maybe, maybe I should show you uh, one of the usages of this empty uh, empty, empty list. So let's say um, let's say that we want uh, we want to show we want to give uh, two options. Uh, let's say we want uh, let's see if right. So let's say that we want to show either U, uh, US dollar exchange rates or euro exchange rates. So let's say we, we want to switch between the two. So uh, we can we can add another state called uh, currency and set currency. And this is going to start as USD. And then here in the H2, we can show currency. And here in the request, we can you can use currency uh, to send that request. So so this is all very good. Uh, we, we're still getting the same uh, the same information as before, uh, but now we can add handlers to these two. Uh, to these two buttons to switch between euro and and uh, USD. So, like we did before with the counter, uh, we can add an on click. Uh, we can call this. Uh, well, actually, uh, yeah. Let's call it set set USD and. This one is going to be set euro. And now we can define our functions. Set USD is going to be uh, set currency USD and set euro is going to be. Okay, there we go. Uh, so, so now, uh, now we can switch. So, let's see what happens. So, you see, uh, nothing happens, right? And the the reason why, well, actually, it, some, something does happen. The uh, the title changes, but the the information is not updated. The function, the, this effect function, is not running, and the reason is that we we configure this function uh, without any dependencies. So so here I'm changing the currency value, uh, but React doesn't know that this function needs to run when currency changes. So this is a good example where in the in the uh, in the second argument you set the list uh, the list of things that uh, when changed should trigger the function to uh, to run again. And now when we switch between euro and USD, another request is sent, and at the end of that request, we call set rates, which refreshes the page. And there we go. So uh, there you go. This is uh, this is the effect hook. Uh, so the the state hook and the effect hook are probably way more important than every other. Concept. So, so these two, along with uh, with rendering, uh, which is what we've seen so far, it's the the absolute core of React. There are definitely there are more things, and I'm going to to go over some of them in uh, in in the next videos. Uh, but with this, you you could really build applications already. Uh, so I hope this was useful. And let me know uh, if you have any feedback. 
but in any case, I will uh, will see you again in uh, part five. See ya. Bye bye.